Now, before we get into the beginning of this review, I just want to apologize ahead of time that I could not edit this video. Uh, for reasons I cannot say, um, <clears throat> uh, I, I just cannot edit my video, um, but don't worry, I hope to try to get my computer up and running again, so don't you worry about that, but hopefully there will be new edited content later, so I apologize that unfortunately I'm not going to edit the reviews for the 7 Deadly Sins. I'm sorry, but anyway, enough said and done, let's get on with the review. Why well, hello people of YouTube, tis I once more, the Crimson Assassin, back again to do yet another anime review. And today, we're going to be looking at an anime that is available on Netflix called The Seven Deadly Sins. Oh boy. So the story of The Seven Deadly Sins takes place in a holy land called Britannia. Yeah, I know, right? Fucking slap on mechs and call yourself fucking Code Geass while you're at it. Anyway, that's besides the point. <clears throat> so in this land called Britannia, a group of people called the Holy Knights take over and they protect the land. <clears throat> that is, except seven individuals known as the Seven Deadly Sins who supposedly planned a coup d'etat against the Holy Knights. <clears throat> so ten years after that incident, incident, you follow a girl named Elizabeth who is on the search for the Seven Deadly Sins because of the... the because of the holy knights who 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 are thought to be these protectors and these um saviors they end up becoming traitors and going against the kingdom and they and they go and they go against their ways and don't really give a shit about their civilians or whatever so it's up to her to find all seven of the seven deadly sins she does find one in, in a conveniently boar hat. She does, ends up finding the captain of the seven deadly sins, Meliodas, who then, they bo as they both uh, go out and they hunt and tries to find the other six seven deadly sins. And that's where the story of it begins. Now, I was requested by my cousin to watch this anime. My cousin being a big, huge fan of the seven deadly sins, he does. He just did not stop talking about. It. He really wanted me to watch this anime. So uh, later on, it became available on Netflix. So I decided to give it a go and finally watch the seven deadly sins. And all I have to say about the anime is that this anime is very good and it's serviceable and it's very average. Like, I'm not gonna lie with you guys. This anime is fucking great. I love a lot of good elements in this anime. There are a pl like, there, there are good things about this anime. But, there are also a bunch of problems with it. And I'm not going to sugarcoat an anime. I never do that. And I never will. I'm a very honest reviewer. So with that being said... Let's get on to it. What are the good elements of The Seven Deadly Sins? Well, we, of course, we've got to talk first about the animation. Done by A1 Pictures, the guys that made Fairy Tail, Anohana, um, and a bunch of other animes, they made The Seven Deadly Sins. And it's fucking great. A A1 Pictures' staple is that they know how to make animes that not only look great, but look colorful as well. Take a look at animes like Fairy Tail, Anohana, even Magi, and a bunch of other animes as well, done by A1 Pictures. They look fucking great, and the animation for Seven Deadly Sins goes without saying. It it's freaking amazing. The color is bright and lively, and the solid character designs as well. And tying in with the animation, the action sequences of this anime are awesome. They are the they are the highlight of the anime. The action in the anime is awesome. Being fast paced and edge on your seat, you don't know what's gonna happen next in this anime. It's fantastic, and I absolutely love the action in this, in this anime. And another thing I want to mention is it's English dubbed. Done by Animax, the guys that also dubbed uh, Sword Art Online, they've done a really serviceable job. Now, the one thing I want to mention about its English dub and people have an issue with 
is the actor Bryce Pappenbrook as Melio. The reason being is that they really tend to question his line of anime. <clears throat> Like, like his role for Kirito from Sword Art Online, Aaron Yeager from Attack on Titan, Rino Kamura from Blue Exorcist, including Meliodas from The Seven Deadly Sins. And in all honesty, I think he did a really good job portraying as Meliodas. He really, and, I, and you can really tell he they, he had really he had a lot of fun voicing Meliodas. He, I really did think that he did a really good job as him and. Props to Bryce Pappenbrook, as well as the other voice actors and actresses as well, like <clears throat> uh, Erica Mendez, who did the voice for Ryuko from Kill la Kill, makes an appearance in this anime, which I thought she did a tremendous job. She was, she's Deanne, and I really like that. She's a talented voice actress, and as well as the other voice actors that did a solid job. I think they all English dub for this anime is very great. Um, last but, uh, another thing is that it's characters. It, the characters in The Seven Deadly Sins are all likable and really developed, and I, and I really did like the characters in this anime. You had the badass and fucking awesome Meliodas. He is so great, and I love his personality. He's very funny, very charming, and very perverted. I really like him, and like I said, Bryce Pappenbrook. It just, it, it just in his voice, he's, he's just had, like, he had a lot of fun with it. It's very fun. The other, now, the other characters I want to mention are the rest of the Seven Deadly Sins, or should I really say six? <laughs> oh, spoiler. Anyway, but the other scenes in the anime are all badass and wow these characters as a team they're the best i mean they have camaraderie they know how to fight and they're all willing to put their lives on the risk even though to some of them there are no danger of them for dying like bond oh my god bond bond is no words can describe how Bond is. He's a very solid, suave, yet badass and shoot first and ask questions later kind of guy. Bond is an amazing character and just, I overall flattered and enjoyed this character. Like every time you see him on the screen, you know he's going to say something badass. That's how great he is. The next character is King, which I really love what they did with this character. He's very um, <clears throat> quiet, but yet he, he really does have a heart, and I absolutely love the development that they gave King. He was very solid, and I very much liked him as a character, especially his relationship with the other deadly sin named Deanne. They had a very solid bond, and I really did enjoy their relationship. I thought that was really well done. Deanne is another solid and serviceable character that is, again, fully developed, and you get an understanding on where she's from and why did she do the things that she did? She is a very solid character and very awesome as well. And very tall. And I, and I absolutely love the relationship that she has with Meliodas. Very playful. And she's kind of a big tease as well. Also, the relationship between, like I mentioned before, Deanne and Bond are all, well, it, it, it's, it's just fantastic. You really, I really, you really like their the relationship. And all the other characters in the anime, well, we'll get into that as well. Um, and the story, I mean, the story of the anime, I mean, the story's good and all, although very cliche, which we'll get into that very shortly. But let's just say, yeah, the story is decent, the story is nothing new or original, but like I mentioned before, it's okay. Now... Like I mentioned before, even though there are a lot of good things about the anime, I'm not going to ignore its very, very noticeable cons. <clears throat> the one and biggest problem, or the first and biggest problem that I have with the Seven Deadly Sins are the Deus Ex Machina, those cop-outs, those plot devices that they use a plethora of times throughout the anime. Wow, I mean, talk about forcing an ending. It is very, very, very far in between. It's like, 
Okay, like, I'll, I'll even give you this example, right? So fucking... There's just one moment where one of the characters almost die, or, or basically dies. And yet, fucking, towards the last episode, oh, wait a minute, that's, you know, she's alive, don't worry about it, she's alive, and it's all because of blah 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 blah, blah which is a spoiler. Fucking, it's a deus ex machina trick. There's another moment that I could that I can actually spoil is that when they're when they're trying to find uh, Bond, which was the other seven deadly sin, fucking when Melly and, and like this this huge uh, barrier was placed around where Bond was headed, right? <clears throat> so they didn't knew that the uh, barrier was up, but when Bond and Meliodas saw each other, they were so happy that the fucking uh, building, whatever there were, that had the portal in it, just starts to crumble down. And along with the shield with it, thus letting them having to escape. That's a fucking plot device right there. That is Deus Ex Machina. Which is annoying. And they don't, and they don't do it just once. They do it throughout the entire anime. It is very, especially towards the end. Oh my god, the second half of the anime. I thought I was watching something completely different. Like, towards the end, the story tried to uh, dip it, and fucking half the shit that was mentioned throughout the anime is not addressed. It was not fully developed. It's Deus Ex Machina! Oh my god. It was, it was so frustrating and so annoying to even come through throughout the anime. Another big issue with this anime is the ending. The ending being a big, huge cliffhanger, and not to mention it being very fo forced. Like, <clears throat> like I mentioned, they only find six out of the seven deadly sins. Major spoiler alert, by the way. So fucking, they, they, they only find, and they leave you in this cliffhanger where... Uh, they're going ahead and they're going to try to find the seventh deadly sin. If there ever is going to be a second season of this anime, you bet your ass I'm going to watch it. But I cannot excuse this anime for its really big and very bad cliffhanger ending. And, and, and not to say that the ending itself is not satisfying. No, it's, it's, it's satisfying. But again, talking about a forced, happy Ending it, 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 it just didn't make any sense and towards the end another gripe with this anime Are some of the characters some of the characters in this anime? Were either a scrapped of and forgotten un until towards the end of the anime and You just really could not give a damn no matter how much development you give this character like Hawk Serving absolutely nothing throughout the anime. Doing absolutely nothing. He's a useless character. And another useless character, which I have to get off my chest, is Elizabeth. My god! She is without a doubt one of the most useless characters in the entire anime. She's done absolutely nothing. She is... Without a doubt, the most stereotypical, bland, and cliche damsel in distress. And want to know what adds insult to injury? She's also a princess. Oh my god, talk about cliche. I'm not exaggerating here. She is, without a doubt, a useless main uh, protagonist. She has done absolutely nothing. Nothing throughout the anime except for adding or for except for continuing on the story on trying to find the seven deadly sins. She's done absolutely nothing, and the only thing that she really done or did was towards the end of the anime, and it was just <sighs> completely crap. It was it was crap. I did not give a shit about this character, she is useless. She did not do anything throughout the anime except adding or continuing on the story. Nuff said. 
And like I mentioned before, some characters throughout the anime were not addressed and were not fully explored. Like, damn. I really did want to know more about Hawk, but apparently fucking... I can't do... I, there's nothing about it that I can really know. And also, Gother. Or one of the other sins that, that wasn't addressed until the last uh, four episodes, Merlin. You know, you could tell that these characters were supposed to serve a purpose, but they just fall flat on their ass. Not to mention the fact that this anime is very cliche when it comes to action and story. Or not action, but an action story. It's very cliche. The story is about a, uh, a princess trying to find seven people called the Seven Deadly Sins. I mean... Th 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 Cliche, it is. But even with all of those problems, I'm not going to um, just swept this anime under the rug. This anime is very decent, and I really did enjoy the watching the Seven Deadly Sins. It's very um, great, and I and I really did like it. Is it anime of the year contender? Not necessarily. I would say it's worth an honorable mention, but nothing about it. Uh, could make the top 10 list. And with that being said, the final verdict for The Seven Deadly Sins is a 6.5 out of 10. A very average anime. And that's going to wrap up. And by the way, guys, this is the last anime review that I will be doing in 2015. This is it. This is the final anime that I will watch and review to give you guys this. So after this, between The Seven Deadly Sins and the first anime I reviewed uh, in 2015, those are the runner-ups on becoming, um, or possibly being contender for anime of the year. Although, again, I already have one. I'm not telling. Anyway, <clears throat> like I mentioned before, um, stay tuned, and stay tuned for month, for, um, Monday, December 14th, where that 12 days of anime began. And I even went out of my way. In the introductory video, I wore my fake fedora hat. But this time, my cousin came through for me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's an elves hat. It's an elves hat. Very holiday festive, I know. Thank you, Nico. I really appreciate this. This will be the hat that I wear throughout the seven uh, for the twelve days of anime. So no more fedoras, okay? You're welcome, Caleb. Anyway, that's gonna wrap things up. Stay tuned for Monday, where the twelve days of anime begins, and stay tuned towards the end of the year um, when I pulled out the top ten best animes of 2015 and the top. 10 worst animes of 2000. Well, not worst. I'll call them disappointing. But until those videos come out, guys, please consider subscribing. And until then, this is the Crimson Assassin signing out on a holiday-fested mood. Until then, guys, peace, YouTube.